Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, as more people join, I will continue to add them uh, to the discussion. Um, <clears throat> so I am uh, Courtney Vance. I am a project manager with Security Consulting, uh, and I will be leading today's uh, CRM Chats webinar. So this is a free monthly roundtable discussion. Um, and we are going to be discussing highlights from uh, Courtney Kearney and Chaz Ross Monroe's uh, new book, which here it is, CRM or Die. And if you don't have a copy already, that's not a problem because uh, the discussion will uh, still provide valuable um, details and insights uh, to today's discussion. So I'll also be sharing uh, questions that are at the end of chapter two. So if you do have the book in hand, we will be going through those questions. You may have also received an email uh, with those prompts. <clears throat> and I am just gonna add a few more people here uh, to, uh, to the panelist role so you can also participate in the discussion. Um, but I will be sending those questions that are at the back of chapter two uh, that were emailed as well if you received that email. But before we do that, let's see. I am going to open up with uh, an introduction and we'll go around and introduce ourselves and I'll call on you in the order that I see you on my panel. And um, we'll get started. So again, my name is Courtney Vance. I'm a project manager at C. Kearney Consulting. I am in the uh, North Texas area. Um, and I do have a cop uh, I have a copy of the book. Um, I was actually uh, part of an early uh, read. We got to read it a little early uh, before the book actually got published. And there's a lot of really good information in there. So now I'd like to go around one by one and uh, let you guys introduce each other. And I'm just gonna add a few more people to the room here. And so the questions uh, for the introduction I'd like you guys to use are uh, your name and title, uh, what firm you're with, your geographic location, and if you have a copy of the book and have you read it. Um, so I am going, so the first person in my queue is Denise. So I'm gonna call on you first, Denise. Hi everybody, nice to see you all. Uh, my name is Denise Yancey, and I'm the uh, the marketing database administrator for Atna, which is a, a Alaska Native corporation with a bunch of subsidiaries. We do mainly uh, uh, construction, environmental cleanup, and uh, professional services. We try to make the world a better place. Uh, when I got here, we didn't have any kind of organization. Uh, combined organization to keep track of all our opportunities and everything and Cosencho has really turned everything around it is a lot of work to implement it but it sure is worth it I mean the the bottom line is going I mean it's it's up I mean we have really gotten more work using this uh, what was the other question Let's see, so name, title, firm, geographic location, and do you have a copy of the book and or have you read it? I even have a signed copy from Courtney. <laughs> and uh, no, I haven't read the whole thing yet. I, I'm doing it chapter by chapter as we're going through these chats. Okay, great. All right, so the next person I have on my list is Deborah Rosenberg. Hi, I'm Deborah Rosenberg. I am with you and Associates. We are a small um, SB MBE engineering firm in uh, the New York metropolitan area. I'm in New Jersey, actually. And um, we are at the very beginning of using a CRM um, within the firm. I've come from larger firms where they've they've had the the technical tools and the and the processes in place. So, uh, but I'm really starting grassroots here. So we have the technologies in a CRM system, and now we are uh, in the early stages of um, assembling the data that we have from various resources and making some of the connections through the technology first, and then rolling that out within the firm. I have not read the book, but I do have the Amazon page up 
as we speak. Awesome. <laughs> Um, and then, so next on my list, I have Christy and, um, Christy, what we're doing is we're just going around and introducing ourselves, name, title, firm, geographic location. And, uh, if you have a copy of the book and, or have you read it? <clears throat> yeah. Hi guys. Sorry, I'm late. Um, my name's Christy Fair. I'm with Rudolph Libby. Uh, we're a general construction contractor in Ohio. And um, I'm a business development specialist, but I kind of manage uh, Cosential for the company. Um, I do have Serum or Die. I'm in the midst of reading it as we speak, um, enjoying it so far. So I'm excited to continue reading it. Awesome. And then next on the list, I have Erica Curtis. Hello, my name is Erica Curtis. I'm the marketing and communication specialist at C. Kearney Consulting. Um, I am in Portland, Oregon, and um, I do have a copy of the book. Um, I, and I'm working my way through it as well as we go chapter by chapter. And I'm brand new to CRM. This is not something I was familiar with before I started working here um, with Courtney with both Courtney's. Um, so this, I'm really lucky that this book came out when it did because it's proving to be a really great orientation to, um, you know, what we do. Sure. And uh, just a, a quick reminder for anyone joining, I am promoting everybody to panelists so that you can be a part of the discussion. So if you see that notification come through, uh, don't be alarmed, it's all a part of the webinar. So. All right, so next up on the list, I have Karen. Hi, I'm Karen Cotton here. Let me turn my video on. Um, I work for Hit Contracting, which is a general contractor in Washington, DC. Um, I'm the knowledge manager for our Microsoft Dynamics CRM system. And I have a little helper here. His name is Roman. He is quarantined from school. So we're working together today. And I got the book a couple of days ago. I haven't started reading yet, but I'm excited to. Awesome. Well, hopefully uh, everything comes out great and you know everybody stays healthy and happy. And uh, he just has a fun vacation from school. So next up on the list, I have Lindsay. Hi, I'm Lindsay Stafford with uh, Carl Sanderson Construction out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I'm a marketing coordinator and mainly work in um, our Cosential CRM. We've had it implemented since 2012, so we're pretty um, versed in it, but are always open to um, implementing new things within the CRM. Wonderful. So next on my list, I have uh, Megan. All right. Hi, I'm Megan Young. I'm with God on Design. We are a sustainable architecture and engineering firm in Indianapolis, Indiana. I am the marketing manager for our team and in the leader in um, Cosential at our firm. I have not read the book because I don't have it. I'm kind of exploring these chats to find out what it's about and um, make that decision. Sure, well, we're glad to have you. All right, so next we have Stacy. Hi, Stacy Ho, I am the CRM and market manager for OTOC, uh, sitting here in Portland, which is where they're headquartered. Um, I did get the book this weekend. Um, so dive, diving into it, actually left it at work though. So it's sitting on my desk where I thought I would be today and I'm not, um, but I do, I do have it around. All right. Well, I'm glad everybody's here. I'm going to go ahead and send through the questions that we're going to cover. And as you can tell, my picture is different than the one that's shown. Uh, I am the other Courtney. And for those of you that missed it, I am a project manager at Security Consulting. And we're going to be going through uh, this chat to today together. So the first question, and if you're following along in your book, it's at the end of chapter two, is are you a data-driven leader? If so, what can you do to improve the use of data at your firm? If not, what is holding you back? 
Does anybody here consider themselves to be a data leader? Oh, awesome. Okay, so Denise, what do you do at your firm um, to improve use of your CRM system? You mean by other people? Or yeah, or, uh, so sorry, what do you do to improve the use of the data? Um, so in uh, data collection, there's multiple uh, approaches to it. You're either just collecting and collecting and collecting the data or you're collecting it with a purpose and you're using the data and the insights um, to drive business decisions. So right. do you guys have any examples of how you're uh, doing this at your firm? Uh, yeah, uh, we're trying, anytime we get like a proposal, a request for proposal, you know, anything like that, I try to squeeze every little bit of data out of it that I can, including not just the name and the number and what you're gonna do, but also the, uh, the, the different uh, contracting officers. That way we can start seeing a pattern. If we get assigned this particular contracting officer and we can see that out of 10 uh, contracts, he's awarded us eight, then we know, you know he likes us and we have a better chance. If he's only awarded us one, it's, you know, if, if push comes to shove, maybe we shouldn't go for this one. Not just for that, but also the, uh, uh, who we're going to partner with. Uh, we keep track of our partners and we keep track of how often we win when we partner with that partner. You know, just we, we try to squeeze everything out of it we can. And that's that's the proposal and the project. Sure, sure. That's great. Um, and, you know, that's definitely in line with one of the case studies that are in chapter two, uh, where um, one of the uh, persons involved and their names were changed, of course, um, they noticed a pattern, you know, they were pursuing these uh, projects with a particular client, and then they could see by looking at that data that actually these are not very profitable projects, and maybe they shouldn't be prioritized going forward. So that, you know, those are definitely great examples of how to use your data uh, once you've been collecting it. Uh, anybody else have any examples on this one? Okay, so then- We do the a, a lot. We do quite a bit at, at OTAC. I'm just bringing some of it to OTAC, but one of them is uh, in relation to the client management. I do a client data dashboard where we look at things like, um, is the client, what's the average client multiplier, um, days outstanding if they haven't paid, um, and then our hit rate uh, in the past with them, competitor analysis. Um, so we have a whole dashboard that we look at um, when we're doing client management planning. Um, and then we do quite a bit of um, sales forecasting. So I, I use our pipeline to forecast out what our sales predictions look like or our sales projections look like for the year. Um, that, those are just starts, but um, I try to use data in pretty much any and every way that I can to drive business decisions. That's wonderful. Yeah, those are, that's great. That's exactly what you, know, you wanna be doing with your CRM system. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next question, which is, does your firm have a clear data process to turn data into information? Information into knowledge, knowledge into insight, and insight into competitive advantages. So the basically the summary of this question is, is how are you, what is your process in collecting and transforming the data into useful information? Does anybody have a good example? So I'm just going to kind of dive in a little bit to uh, part of the chapter, which there was a reference to how data is not a diet, um, that, you know, it's an ongoing process, you know, and it's, um, and you have to start small. So, you know, when I, I feel like, especially when you're implementing a new system, it can feel kind of overwhelming because it's like, oh, there's so many parts and pieces that you have to consider. But when you're actually focusing on how you're going to collect the data and process it, start small. And then over time, you build those good habits and you maintain you know, um, with keeping your data reliable and how you are going to push it out into your, um, your dashboards or other functions within your system to make good business decisions uh, about which pursuits to go after. So, 
Oh, did anybody have a comment? I want to say there's probably on your blog somewhere there's a recording of a session that was given where somebody introduced their manual, their like process manual that was, I want to say like Star Wars based or something. It was phenomenal. <laughs> I don't know, whatever it was, it was phenomenal. If you can find it on the website. I'm all ears on this one because writing process procedure manuals is, is what I'm in the midst of right now. Um, and it, it is very hard to have discussions with people about who owns the data and when do they own it. I, I mean, I, I'm trying to do a matrix right now of just who owns that that information on the pipeline project. And it's like, well, it starts with the PM and then it moves to marketing and then it moves to accounting. It's like, oh my God, can't we just have one owner? Like, so yeah, I, this is a tough one. We have yeah, a, and this, a policy that we follow for CRM users. We have a CRM usage policy that dictates just like three pages, what the expectations are of the CRM user. It doesn't get into all the details. Our CRM user guide does that, but it is really helpful governance document that, you know, provides clarity on who's supposed to do what in what roles. And it it's definitely helpful to get your company on the same page with that. It's not an easy thing to do by any means. I inherited it from someone else. I did not make that happen myself. Yeah, so often that is definitely the case. And what we've seen is uh, we've seen a lot of success in actually drawing out a visual, like a flow chart or some kind of map that, you know, integrates, okay, it comes from here, you know, what events are triggering off of this change to here? And then just mapping out that flow of data all throughout your system, because it then it helps your users see, oh, this is one part of a bigger process. And it helps kind of go back to that why statement of why you're um, you know, doing all this. So it definitely helps with visualization. I have a flow right. diagram that we created for my company that I'm willing to send. I'll put my email in the chat box. Oh, thank you. All right. So the next question, are you using data to increase your firm's profitability, effectiveness, and efficiency? Um, I have an example for that. So our company, um, there's one person that sends out a report monthly about our opportunity wins. And um, we've been starting to capture uh, more often the reasons either the opportunity went away, we won it or lost it. And um, I believe all of our senior leaders view the report and it's, it's, becoming more it's helping them become more strategic when we figure out the reason why we either lost the project or why we won it and it turns out a lot of the times that we win it is based on relationships definitely makes sense gotta have the right person in place that people so that the team works well together all right so next question are you a data champion committed to uh, viewing data as a lifestyle. Does your firm have a culture of data stewardship, established data rules, and a data officer? So this is basically just kind of getting to, you know, how do you have your uh, CRM uh, team set up? Do you have uh, specific roles and, you know, how are you making sure that uh, the data is getting reviewed? And, you know, I think this kind of goes back to, um, Lindsay's comment, you know, this is definitely, this definitely relates to what she just mentioned, but anybody else have anything similar? Okay. Oh, go ahead. This please. is Megan Young from. Oh, go ahead, Megan. Um, we are in a fortunate spot where, um, since we're a small business, most of the um, executive leadership are the ones that are the primary license holders to the information. And so they enter in their own opportunities. Um, all by, I still have to review quite a bit of that data and make sure that the integrity is there. Um, but it feeds directly into our ERP and we use that data-driven information to make decisions on, um, you know, what kind of sales we chase the next year, if that, um, if our objective for of the certain client targets we identify at the beginning of the year are what we follow through pursuing, if so, why not, and um, make decisions that way. We also have real-time projection data that we report to our company um, twice a month. Wonderful. 
wonderful. I think I saw um, some others had comments too. Go ahead. Uh, I'm the primary uh, uh, data implement, or inputting person, but just we're, we're trying to get all the PMs and all the executives to feel free to go into Cosential, add any knowledge that they have that we don't. We tell, we tell them over and over again how, how valuable their knowledge is and how it can make a difference. And we yeah. even hired Security Construction to come up and give us a, a, our company a couple, I think two day tutorial on different aspects and it worked really well. People, we, what we want them to do is not them to be scared of the program to feel like it's their program too and it can benefit what they do. Each one of us has a different purpose for using it. Um, I do have to do cleanup, but I don't mind that. I mean, I. I I like things nice and tidy. I want them to, it's better to have the information and me clean it up than not have the information at all. Absolutely. And I just wanted to kind of touch back to a point that you made that the people that are client facing, they often have those tidbits of information that are so critical to get into the system. You know, they're interacting with the clients. They're finding out on occasion personal information, you know, about them, like, oh, they have a kid in soccer or, you know, maybe they had a loss in the family. And, you know, that those kinds of details are important because then that allows you to say, oh, happy birthday to your son or your daughter. And I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, so definitely getting that PM involvement is uh, so, so crucial and so important. Uh, anybody else have any um, comments on um, the uh, roles and management within your company um, as far as your CRM system is concerned? I think um, I've seen I've seen Courtney do a list of, of roles too, but I really strongly believe in sort of the auditor versus editor role. You know, I, I sort of am the auditor. I like to audit the data consistently for cons for consistency, for missing information, for whatever is needed. But I expect my team to be the editors, to put the data in, to find out the data, to get it out of people's heads or you know, into the system. So we have that symbiotic relationship where they edit, I audit, they edit, I audit. And I, I like to feel like that's the, the roles that I, I push people to play. Sure, yeah, that, that is definitely a good way to go about it as well. Any other comments? Okay, well, that brings us to our last question of the call, uh, which is, have you visited our website for the additional resources? So I'm going to drop it in. So this is a particular page of the website that can take you to if you need to purchase the book or if you would like to check out some of the preview materials that are available um, for your reading enjoyment. Well, we have about five minutes left on the call. Is there... Um, are there any other comments about any of the topics we've covered in chapter two or um, we can call it a day and we'll see you next month. I have a question. Sure. For the group is how do you determine what information is important to collect? Has anybody figured that out yet? Because we're um, I'm definitely in the middle of reviewing that, being new to the firm. Um, and one of the things I am trying to map is workflows that collect different sets, data sets as we progress through the stages of an opportunity. So an early opportunity would have fewer fields required than a later opportunity. Um, and I am trying to limit it to just things that I know we either report on or we target or plan around. Um, and I, I'm trying to remove as much of the fat as I can. It's a good question, though. Who dictates what you report on? Is that the leadership, or do you come up with that? Uh, for me, it's a little bit of both. Um, there's things that they have had as targets. Uh, I am trying to adjust their view a little bit um, to things I believe should be targets in addition or instead. So a little bit of both. I think Denise had a comment too. Go ahead, Denise. Yeah. Before 
Before I did the CRM database, I, I was working primarily in both marketing and business development. So I, uh, I responded to requests for proposals, and I know what gets asked over and over again, and what we need as um, examples for all of those. So that's what I try to put in there. Anytime I see a really good project description, or a description for what a, a, a project manager does, you know, that's just examples you know, the verbiage, now we have a place to put that and hold it and use it for uh, future proposals. Um, the other thing is, like when we go to uh, conferences, uh, we get asked for certain information before they even leave for the conference, and then when they come back from the conference, they have more information, like uh, things that they heard at the conference that might be coming up next year with uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, things like that. Now we have a place to put it that all of us can share. That's the kind of stuff I look for. Things like uh, Stacy said, reports. When people ask me to run a report on this, I, after I'm done running the report, then I make sure that I keep collecting that kind of information the way that they asked for it too, because that's probably how they're going to ask for it in the future. That's an excellent that strategy. Make, does that make sense? Yeah, thanks for sharing. All right, anybody else? Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today. I uh, hope to see you back next month. And uh, the website link, if you wanna look at those additional materials was dropped in the chat window. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.